Nikola has recently released a groundbreaking video for their new factory that's going to be in Coolidge, Arizona, and I watched the entire 40 minute video so that you don't have to. The first time they uploaded the video, only the first minute and 45 seconds had sound and the rest of it was completely silent. But eventually they re-uploaded it and it had sound so we can learn their master plan. And let me tell you, it's a fun one. But first let me give you a little backstory on the company because it's not pretty. First of all, Nikola's main product is the semi-truck, which was supposed to be available back in 2019. And as of today, not only is it not available, but it hasn't even begun road testing, much less actual broad scale production. So here's what we learned from this groundbreaking ceremony. This new factory that they're going to be producing 35,000 trucks per year when they're running 24-7 is scheduled to wrap up phase one of construction in late 2021 and phase two by mid-2023. Did you guys just hear that? The factory that's going to be building the semi-trucks that Nikola said would be available back in 2019 won't even be done until mid-2023. That's going to be a minimum of four years behind what they said they were going to do. Clearly, seeing that this was going to be a really bad look, claiming that they promised something and they took pre-orders for it, they've partnered with Iveco. I think it's Iveco. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It's German. They've, they've partnered with Iveco in Germany to produce their Nikola Trey battery-only version, which has no hydrogen fuel cell, uh, and the production is supposed to begin on the battery-only version in mid-2021. And I guess that's better than nothing, but it's still not very impressive considering it isn't a hydrogen-powered semi, it's just electric, and it's still two years behind their production schedule. But we'll probably see more as it goes on. What they did say, however, is that the first hydrogen fuel cell semis are going to begin production in 2023. Which sounds like, okay, they're trying to expedite the production process, but Iveco is only going to be producing the Nikola Trey, which is their European style. The styles to be marketed to North America, aka the Nikolas 1 and 2, are going to be produced solely at the Arizona plant. The Nikola Trey will be sold into North America, however, we don't have a timeline on how soon Iveco is going to produce them or ship them to the US, but I would assume they're going to be sold more in Europe as they have greater demand there and the style is more European. They also stated that the tray is more for metropolitan areas as a delivery truck because of its good maneuverability and tight turn radius. Whereas the Nicholas 1 and 2 will have a traditional American truck style with the longer hood for better aerodynamics. So just to be clear, because this is important, their semis, which were supposed to be available back in 2019, won't even begin production until 2023. And look, I hate to beat a dead horse here, but they're saying that they're going to begin production in 2023, but that's based on their current estimates. And let's just say they've missed every production mark so far. So I don't believe they're going to make this one, but I could just be a skeptic. And if that wasn't bad enough, let's touch real quick on the hydrogen refueling stations that are going to be powering these semis. As of right now, there are 48 public hydrogen refueling stations, 43 of which are in California. If you go to Nikola's site, you see a map and it looks like there's a lot more than 48 station, stations, which is kind of weird, so I kept digging. If you look at the Department of Energy, the map looks like this. If you look at the Google Maps, it's not even close. And after looking and looking as to where they're finding all these stations, I found an article from ARS Technica, which was showing that the map is their planned locations, not their actual locations. Planned. Nowhere on their site does it say anything about this map being planned locations. The map doesn't have a title or anything. They're putting the map up there to make it look like they already have these stations, they already exist, but they don't. I can't actually believe that they'd put that map up on their site without stating that these are potential stations, not ones already in existence. It's super shady of them not to state openly on their site. Nikola's current plan is to add 34 fueling stations by 2024. So unless you live in California, you're going to have a hard time fueling your semi. Also, I found an article from 2017 from Transport Topics which said Nikola intends to have 700 stations as part of its 10-year plan. I'm not exactly sure when this 10-year plan start date was, but now they've changed it to 34 stations in the next four years, so there's a slight difference there. Oh, and another thing. Nikola has claimed that they have $10 billion worth of orders. It sounds great, right? Well, get this. The government filings have called that $10 billion an expression of interest because it's cancelable and doesn't require a deposit. 
Two other products that are likely going to be produced at their new Arizona factory are the Nikola Wave and the Nikola NZT. Maybe that's pronounced next, I'm not really sure. Anyway, the Wave is an all-electric watercraft, basically a jet ski, and the NZT is an off-road vehicle. But get this, the Wave was supposed to ship to customers back in early 2020, and the NZT in 2021. Clearly, the Wave didn't actually ship, and we've heard no new news on the NZT since its announcement back in April of 2019. Oh, and right now, you can still pre-order both of them. And this is just an educated guess on my part, but I would suspect that the Wave and the NZT aren't their number one priorities when it comes to factory resources, so they likely won't be produced until act after the factory is fully up and operational and has more resources at the earliest in 2023. Nikola hasn't stated if the Wave and NZT will be produced at their Arizona factory. That's just their only factory, and it's not even produced yet. But they could have some other manufacturer produce it for them, just like they're doing with the tray, but nothing has been announced yet. Are you seeing the pattern that I'm seeing with announcing products, taking pre-orders, and then not fulfilling those promises? It's pretty sketchy to me. The whole speech, they were worried that a storm was going to come, so they rushed everything, and I couldn't think of a better metaphor for the Nikola company. A storm is coming, and everyone needs to run for cover. Oh, and one last thing. They claim that their factory in Arizona will only use clean energy, which is awesome, but not too surprising considering the only thing they've ever produced is vapor. So I was just going through their groundbreaking announcement, and there was one part that I wanted to record because I wanted to get the quote, but I wrote it down in my notes. And he said, these are working prototypes and aren't designed to get down poured on. So as soon as he said that, I was like, okay, you've had these semi prototypes since 2016 because they unveiled them at the show and they're still not waterproof or at least water resistant. That was kind of surprising to me. So I time stamped it in the video and I was going to go record it later. Well, I just went to go record it and Nikola has removed that statement from the groundbreaking ceremony. What they did is they have a clip of him talking and then they zoom out to a drone shot so that you don't see them clip that part out where he said, these prototypes aren't designed to get designed to get down poured on. That's kind of sketchy. And I noticed they re-uploaded it like a few, a few hours ago and I was kind of surprised because they had already fixed the sound problem. So I don't know they, why they'd want to re-upload it, but they changed the video. I don't know what else they changed because I only directly wrote down a quote on this one, but I'm sure they changed other things and that, that sketches me out even more. But anyways, that's just my opinion based off the research I've done on the company. What do you guys think? Am I right, wrong, or somewhere in between? Let me know in the comment section below and thanks for watching. Okay, so real quick, this is the first time I've ever filmed myself talking uh, in front of a camera and it was super awkward. I had a really hard time with it. I did a bunch of takes and it was rough, but I got through it. And what I'd like to say is if you have any advice on camera setups or lighting or microphone or anything like that, I'd love to hear it because I'm still very new to this and I want to make good quality stuff, but I'm not entirely sure how. I've watched a bunch of YouTube tutorials, but as of right now, I have a pretty constrained budget, so I'm just using my iPad to film it, and then I use my iPad to edit it, and all of that is done on my iPad. But if you guys have any advice as far as speaking or, or really anything, just constructive criticism, I'd love to hear it. And again, thanks for watching my video. I really appreciate it.